Welcome to another movie of Flix Studio Recaps. We will be discussing a 2011 movie shame. Sit back and enjoy. Brandon Sullivan is an unmarried individual residing in New York City, but he is grappling with a compulsive addiction to sex that controls his life. This fixation consistently occupies his thoughts, leading him to frequently invite call girls to his apartment. Brandon has a sister named Sissy, who works as a lounge singer, but he habitually ignores her morning phone calls, which highlights the emotional disconnect between them. One day, during Brandon's commute to work on the subway, he notices a young woman. He is unable to control his impulses and makes her uncomfortable by approaching her with a predatory look. He even begins to follow her, but she skillfully disappears into the crowd, leaving Brandon frustrated. He proceeds to his office, where he indulges in self-gratification in the office restroom. His office laptop contains inappropriate videos, further illustrating the extent of his addiction. While at home, engrossed in content, Brandon's phone rings repeatedly. It's Sissy, delivering dramatic news of a terminal cancer diagnosis with only a week to live. In reality, these claims are false and merely an attempt to gain Brandon's attention. Despite the seriousness of the situation, Brandon dismisses the call by hanging up, further indicating his emotional detachment from his sister. At work, Brandon's boss David, who is also his close friend, invites him to unwind at a club after work. David becomes infatuated with a young woman there, buying her drinks and dancing with her. However, it's Brandon who captures her interest. She offers Brandon a ride when she leaves the club, and they share an intimate moment on an empty sidewalk. Upon returning home, Brandon is alarmed to hear music and voices emanating from his apartment. He fears a break-in and arms himself with a baseball bat, only to discover that it's Sissy taking a bath in his bathroom. She had a key to his place and entered due to his refusal to answer her calls. That evening, Brandon overhears Sissy in a heart-wrenching phone conversation with her lover Mark, pleading with him not to abandon her and rejecting her affection. Sissy has recently secured singing gigs in New York and asks Brandon if she can stay with him for a short period, as her boyfriend cheated on her, causing her deep emotional pain. Sympathetic to her turmoil, Brandon agrees to let Sissy live with him for a while. The next day, Sissy invites Brandon to attend one of her performances, and he agrees, contingent on finishing work early. However, a computer virus disrupts their workplace, leading to all office computers being sent for repair. David expresses interest in joining Brandon at Sissy's show. That night, Brandon and David go to Sissy's performance, where she delivers a moving rendition of New York, New York. Brandon is deeply moved by his sister's musical talent, becoming emotional. David is also impressed and compliments Sissy's incredible voice. After the performance, David and Sissy engage in a conversation, during which David initiates flirtation. Brandon observes this with unease, especially noticing scars on Sissy's arms from self-inflicted wounds. After the show, the three of them share a taxi ride home, and tension grows as Brandon watches Sissy and David share a passionate kiss and later engage in sexual activity in his bedroom, causing Brandon discomfort. Frustrated and unable to cope, Brandon goes for a late-night jog. Upon returning, he witnesses the aftermath of their activities in his bedroom and angrily orders Sissy to leave, further straining their relationship. The next day, David informs Brandon that explicit content has been found on his office computer, jeopardizing his professional life. David suspects it might be the work of an intern and takes a call from his family, allowing Brandon to slip out of the office unnoticed. Later, Brandon goes on a date with a co-worker named Marianne but discovers their differing views on commitment. Marianne believes strongly in long-term relationships, while Brandon admits to having short-lived relationships. Upon returning home, Brandon engages in explicit activities, and an argument ensues with Sissy, leading to her leaving the house. 
Alone in his apartment, Brandon contemplates his life and makes a significant decision to discard pornography and make a change. The next day, he encounters Marianne again, and they share a kiss but encounter difficulties when they plan to get a hotel room. Brandon then engages in explicit activities with a prostitute in the hotel room. That evening, while at home, Sissy returns and discusses David with Brandon, leading to an argument where Brandon asks her to stay away from David due to his family. Brandon's frustration escalates as he berates Sissy, eventually asking her to find somewhere else to stay. Sissy protests, highlighting the importance of family support, but Brandon harshly labels her as irresponsible and a burden. Disturbed by these events, Brandon goes to a bar, engages in explicit discussions with a woman, and faces physical violence from her boyfriend. He later visits a gay club, encounters a man, and checks his phone to find emotional voice messages from Sissy, whom he has been ignoring. Nevertheless, he proceeds to a brothel and engages in explicit activities with two women. While taking the metro home, he learns of a suicide on the tracks, which intensifies his worry for Sissy. Desperately, he tries to contact her. Upon returning home, Brandon discovers Sissy in a dire state, having slashed her wrists. He rushes her to the hospital, where she regains consciousness. Brandon reflects on Sissy's scars and embraces her, signaling a newfound commitment to be there for her. Later, he walks the streets in the rain, acknowledging his past mistakes and resolving to make amends for the sake of his loved ones. A few days later, Brandon encounters a woman on the subway, but he deliberately ignores her advances, signifying his commitment to leading a responsible life. And so, in this subtle yet powerful way, the story comes to a close, leaving us with a sense of hope for Brandon's journey toward redemption. What did you guys think of this movie? Certainly one of reflection on our own lives and addictions. Subscribe to watch more videos like this turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out thank you for watching.